Hey, you geeks. I have traveled so far in my exploration of Cosmere ethics that I've circled back to Yasna Colon. This is Yasna v. Einstein, part one, where I'll compare the surge of transportation to the physics and baffling philosophy around quantum mechanics. For I could not miss Sanderson's little joke in the Else Caller's Oath. I will reach my potential. It's like a pun. It's a play on words. Sanderson is known for using real-world physics to ground his magic system, particularly the surges. So you see, potential has a specific meaning in quantum mechanics and in classic Western philosophy. This double meaning I propose points to the lesson that else callers and their spren will have to learn to fully unleash the surge of transportation. This video only contains plot-related spoilers through book two, but there is one out-of-context Rhythm of War quote. Disclaimer, I am a historian philosopher, not a physicist. When did you become an expert in thermonuclear astrophysics? Last night. Though, growing up, I watched Nova's elegant universe a lot. The Surges. Sanderson has been very upfront about the pseudoscience nature of surge binding. The ten surges are the fundamental forces of Roshar. In particular, adhesion, gravitation, division, abrasion, progression, illumination, transformation, transportation, cohesion, and tension. Some of these surges correspond directly to the fundamental forces in physics, which in order of discovery are gravity, electromagnetism, strong atomic force, and the weak atomic force. Gravity, of course, corresponds to gravitation. We'll get back to electromagnetism. While the Ars Arcanum straight up calls cohesion the surge of the strong axial force, while tension is the surge of the weak axial force. Axes are the Cosmere word for atom. A quick reading of the Stormlight Archive would support throwing electromagnetism out of this system. I ain't gonna be part of this system. Stormlight and Fabriel technology have replaced electronics on Roshar. However, when Sanderson replaced electricity with investiture, he gave investiture the properties of electrons. We first see this in Garanid's interlude back in the Way of Kings. One of the two flames spread danced atop the log, shape changing and length flickering like the flames themselves. The other had taken on a far more stable shape. Its length no longer changed, though its form did slightly, as if the spren knows somehow that it has been measured, as if merely defining its form traps it. Much smarter fans than I have pointed out that the spren embody Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. This principle in the real world describes how electrons behave in their paths around the nucleus. It's woogie woogie woogie. The study of small particles like electrons is called quantum mechanics. Now, I don't really understand quantum mechanics, but neither did Einstein. If you want a thorough explanation, check out my sources linked in the description. Quantum mechanics says you cannot know for certain the outcome of an experiment. You can only assign a certain probability to the outcome because electrons are potentially in multiple places at once or they jump from one place to another without covering the distance between. Hence why electron's erratic behavior is a good science on which to base the surge of transportation. 
The only in-text description of transportation we've gotten is from Yasna's notes in The Way of Kings. Within a heartbeat, Elezarv was there, crossing a distance that would have taken more than four months to travel by foot. Transportation appears to allow instantaneous teleportation, like the Oath Gates, but an else caller can do it on demand. I propose Sanderson will use Electron's potential as the science which grounds this power. Electron potential. To grossly oversimplify, each atom is made of a positively charged nucleus surrounded by electrons. At one point, it was thought electrons orbited the nucleus in clean circles, but Heisenberg and Schrodinger changed all that. Rather than perfect circles, electrons' paths, now called orbitals, take the shape and property of waves. The further the electron gets from the nucleus, the stranger the wave pattern becomes. Also, the further away an electron is from the nucleus, the greater electric potential it contains. We see this in nature all the time. When the lower part of a thunderstorm becomes negatively charged compared to the neutrally charged Earth. Electrons don't like being unstable and want to return to a ground state as directly as possible. In a tiny atom, imagine the nucleus as the ground, and each orbital is a type of cloud. Clouds close to the nucleus have the lowest potential, relatively circular orbits, and are relatively stable. The further away those clouds get, the stranger the shapes become, until electrons are jumping so fast they mathematically teleport from one place to another. An electron measured in a high potential orbital could in one instant be here, and in the next instant be there. When not being measured, the electron could potentially exist in both places. This phenomenon is what led to Schrodinger's famous thought experiment. You set up a closed system, a box. Inside the box is a quantum system, like a single radioactive atom. When the atom decays, a door opens. Behind the door is poisoned cat food. Also in the box is a cat that will eat the food when it becomes available. So you wait the length of the atom's half-life, and then you ask yourself the key question. Is the cat alive or dead? Without opening the box, the cat is suspended in a pure potential space. Thus, the cat is and is not dead at the same time. I understand the physics. I understand the dead cat. But you, you can't really understand the physics without understanding the math. I mean, even I don't understand the dead cat. Electrons, like photons, are mixtures of waves and particles. Therefore, they can superimpose, meaning an electron can potentially exist in several separate quantum states at the same time until observed. This state of pure potential is a mind-bending concept that by definition is not observable in the real world. This is why Schrodinger's cat is a thought experiment, not a lab experiment. In a lab, in actuality, according to Dr. Ethan Seagal, the cat itself would count as an observer. In fact, any non-reversible interaction that occurs within that system, even if it's completely sealed off from the outside world in that box, would reveal one and only one definitive state. Either the atom has decayed or it has not. Thus, Schrodinger's cat remains a thought experiment. Einstein disliked the untestable aspects of quantum mechanics' potential and probabilities. He hated it so much that he coined the phrase, 
God does not throw dice. I will bet good spheres that Voronism's hatred of games of chance comes from Einstein. That and a certain pit in Dante's Eighth Circle of Hell. Einstein's take is also why I met a ship Yasna and Matrim Coffin from the Wheel of Time. Why else would you study theoretical physics if not for the shipping? Back to transportation, I'm going to double down and say Sanderson will take us inside Schrodinger's box, a hypothetical place where philosophers thrive. Philosophy. Back in Aristotle's day, the distinction between physics and metaphysics, or philosophy, was not well defined. For this section, I'll focus on things that cannot be measured, which is the contemporary realm of philosophy. Physics is an experimental science. It deals with the results to experiments, or in the case of astronomy, observations. Aristotle defined potential, or potency, in three ways. A, the source of motion or change which is in something other than the thing changed. B, the power of performing well or according to intention. C, all states in virtue, of which things are unaffected generally, are called potencies, for they break through impotence. In short, Aristotle gave us the physical or mechanical potential of any object. It is the potential of a cat to die or a die to be cast. Then he added the potential for excellence, which humans obtain through practice, like how Caledon perfected the spear. Finally, there is his potential for virtue, which Aristotle states is maintained through practice, like how Caledon insists that Bridge Four must continue to care so they may become radiant. I wanna be the very best, like no one ever was. Through their ideals, Knights Radiance reach higher and higher levels of excellence and maintain greater virtue. So the higher an Elskaller's ideal, the greater Aristotelian potential they have. Aristotle's very broad definition of potential seems at first different from an electron's distance from the nucleus. However, they do share one important trait. Every potentiality is at the same time a potentiality for the opposite. For whereas that which is incapable of happening cannot happen to anything, everything which is capable may fail to be actualized. That which is capable of being may both be and not be. Therefore, the same thing is capable of both being and not being. To be. Or not to be. That is the question. Aristotle broadened Schrodinger's box, placing both excellence and virtue in with the cat. Once in the box, they are suspended in the paradox, where the cat is presumed to be like an electron in two states at the same time. It is a paradox because it defies Aristotle's only limit on potentiality. The capacity for two contraries can belong to a thing at the same time, but the contraries cannot be long at the same time. The actualities, health and disease, cannot belong to a thing at the same time. Meaning that there is no way for the cat to actually be both dead and not dead in reality. Which is exactly what Dr. Siegel said would happen. But Sanderson is not bound by reality. He's writing fantasy. Where? Things are happening the else callers may be able to access the magical state of pure potential, where their existence, skill, and ideals 
could be put at stake. This would be quite hard for Yasna and all the Inkspren, who talk like Yoda in ironic absolutes. Do or do not. There is no try. The else callers might have to gamble their very souls to gain the surge of transportation, which raises the most important question. Does honor throw dice? The surge of transportation is full of potential, so like quantum mechanics, it is full of uncertainty. To access the surge of transportation, probably through her fifth ideal, her highest potential, Yasna will have to act in the face of uncertainty. She will have to gamble, just as honor has done. But he died at the table, and I want all of his money. Honor has rolled the dice in the hearts of the people of Roshar to defeat Odium. This was a true gamble for him because I don't think he's omnipotent. An omnipotent, capital G, God, exists in all potential realities, and through it, all things are possible. So, if I may refute Einstein, an omnipotent god may or may not throw dice since any potential outcome of the dice is possible. I do not think Honor is an omnipotent capital G god, primarily because he is dead. The spark of his life is smothered in shite. And yet, omnipotent is a Greek term picked up by early Christians to use interchangeably with the biblical term almighty. That name, like Pavlov, should ring a bell. For the almighty, honor is not dead so long as he lives in the hearts of men. Thus, we have Schrodinger's deity. Whether or not honor is absolutely dead, I'm still not convinced any of Sanderson shards are truly omnipotent. That makes his actions a greater gamble. By dying, Honor has cast his die, another pun, into the hearts of the peoples of Roshar, where there is pure potential in three ways, mechanical, excellence, and virtue, all which could make odium powerless. How many we win? One. Though the question remains, how does all this fit with Honor's truest surge of gravity, the music of the spheres, and Einstein? I will return to those questions in Yasna the Einstein Part 2, where we will tie these concepts together with strings. Next week, T.W. Raven and I are launching a podcast over on his channel. We're starting in the Cosmere, but we'll be hopping between the worlds every other week. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe if you would like to see more. Your patronage is greatly appreciated.